What up, everybody? Welcome to Legacy TV and the Combo Podcast. And today, I am very, very, very honored, blessed, and goes back to when I was a white belt, when I was training in my gym, and one of my instructors was able to bring this man to my gym, and I was able to learn from him when I was just getting started. And, and uh, of course, I, I stayed with my coach always from white belt till where I'm at now, but it was awesome to have learned from him at the time and a legend, a real, real legend of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. The family, the the connections, the relationships, you've, you've been there, you've done it all. Guys, today, what a blessing we have. Higgy Machado in the house. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. Thank you for coming here, brother. Thank you for coming. My I appreciate pleasure. it, and I'm I'm very excited to 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 get this started and yes, and yes. and get into your you know your history and you know the your thoughts on a lot of things and and also have some fun. Yeah, yeah. Because I heard you're a rapper as well, like me. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> I was listening to that one song, uh, uh, "Every Day Another Hispanic." That that yeah, one that you did. Day in yeah, that one, you got a lot of views on that one. We might have to do a song one day, Higgin. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why the accent. Uh, but hey, it was pretty cool though. You it was know? pretty cool actually. I, was, I I watched it a bunch of times, and I was like, that 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 was pretty dope. So you know, one day maybe you know we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll do the collaboration on the song. But um, uh, in all seriousness, thank you for for being my here, pleasure, brother. Um, let's let's you know my my viewers, the people that follow me, you know, a little bit hip hop, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but a lot of the mixed martial arts community, the, okay. the, the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu community. And you are a big part of the story of this. And that's why today I wanted to have you here to kind of tell yeah. your perspective on, on things and how things went and how things became what it is today. Okay. So let's, let's, let's take it back first. Born in Brazil. I born in a city called Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, um, uh, my family. My father is a guy named Carlos Machado. My mother is Luisa Augusta Silva Machado. Um, I'm in the middle. Brother, I have two brothers older than me, Carlos and Roger, and two brothers younger than me, Jackie and John. Um, my mother's sister, Mary Carlos Grace, the founder of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. In early age, you have a very strong relationship with the Grace family, with uh, Carlos Grace and his kids. Close friends and hang out and yeah, eat up, together. Like my uncle, have fun, my cousins. Yeah. And basically, I moved to, from a small city to live in the big city. I moved to live with Carlos Grace, to go to high school, to go to, to get myself ready to go to college. And between this time, my cousin trained jiu-jitsu every day. I end up start doing jiu-jitsu. What age was that that you started? Uh, they, I start very early. I start five years old, but oh, I wow. start real training very hard. You know, with my cousins around fourteen years old. That's when they start training every day. I have opportunity to train at the, uh, the academy in Copacabana. In the Academy of Copacabana was very interesting because there's two brothers named Hoss Grace and Carson Grace, and they share the academy. In the academy, like um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Hall's students. Yeah. Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturday, Carson students. And basically, like, they share the academies, like, different schedule, like, oh, a night. At different group of students as well? Yeah, big rival between both. <laughs> In the, the same biggest, school? The same school, because it's a castle, and halls is a completely different academy. Wow. But they share the academy. That's how they start. Where, the, where, where is it the students that had the issue, or was the... the no, in competition. It's competition, the number okay. one Because castle have one of the top clubs at the time in competition. Yeah. And Hawes have uh, a top club too. Yeah. And it was like between them, Castle and Hawes uh, fighting who is and, the ending number up one in the championships. Number game. one academy in the country at the time. Um, but I have opportunity to train for both. I trained for Castle as a kid, I trained for Hawes. Uh, but when I start get a little bit uh, in, more in competition, 
I end up stay with Ross Grace. In Ross Grace, start like me, he start to see a lot of potential. And he put Carlos Grace Jr. to be a full time coaching for me. And Carlos Grace was his one of his brothers. Yeah, I live in the same house with my cousin Carlos Grace Jr. And um, he put me to train all the time. He a uh, couple times a week he take me to have private lessons with Hickson. I have opportunity to train if a lot of real How top old athletes. Can, like I I've heard the story about, about you and Hickson, but some people might not have. Like how old were you when you started training with Hickson and how old was Hickson? No, Hickson is older cousin. Uh, it basically like uh, when they start training for Hickson twice a week in you know, privates. Uh, we have a school in a place called Barra, mm. Copacabana, and later we moved to Barra da Tijuca when they opened uh, Grace Barra in, in that area called Barra. And Hickson have a school in a place called Botafogo. Uh, in this uh, private school, they have an area they teach the students in the private. Hickson like to teach us because he we are high level students and I have opportunity me and my brothers to go over there with some other cousins to train for him. What belt were you at the time? Do you I was a, a blue belt. Blue or belt. Something. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, like these private classes where they like he was training with you guys. In yeah, the class. he show us techniques. He show what I love about Hickson. What I learned a lot about Hickson. Hickson. Uh, Hoss Grace and Hicks, it's two different games. Uh, uh, Hoss is about a lot of mobility, agility. Uh, Quick, uh, like hop yeah. to the side. Hicks have more tight game, more like a L- wet blanket. anaconda type of thing. <laughs> and like for you. some reason, I adjust better for this kind of game. Yeah, heavy. I'm not, I'm not like, example, my brother Jean-Jacques. He have a lot of mobilities. I'm another, more the type of guy, more like a, a blanket the guy. Yeah. My other brothers, Carlos, uh, John, they have this kind of game too, more like Hall's game. Yeah. I have more like Hickson game. I absorb very well what he taught me. He based, I spend a lot of time playing this kind of game, very tight. Very it's tight. Like a, almost like you interpret an animal like an anaconda. Yeah. I want to tie you up, you know what I mean? And Absolutely. Control, everything about control. Everything, mount control, this, side control. What you're saying right now is everything I tell my students yeah. and, and what, what I try. And on top of that, like as I'm getting older, I realize that that's what's keeping me kind of safe body wise. Because when I was white blue belt, I was light. I was 160 to 190 pounds. And when I was competing, I would fly all over the place. And then when I got purple belt, I became, I had my babies, my kids, and I became two, 240 pounds. And then I, my game completely changed. Hey, I would come home. I make the whole hamburger helper. The kids will have a couple of spoons. I eat the whole rest of it by myself. That that, that time I blew up. So I, at that time, though, uh, I learned how to be a big guy. And I think... I think that's very important for people in jiu-jitsu as well, like to learn how to be, be play the small game and also play the big game. Just if, if you can learn how to kind of incorporate both, it can help you to be good at everything. So for me, I was being overweight and then being very light I, I, and being able to train as many years with people small and, you know, 460 pounds and you get to see it all. I think... You already know what I'm talking about, but I think that's kind of what for for you guys that don't understand jujitsu. That's why people how are get so good is because the practice with all these different types of bodies and stuff. But um, but back to so you you were taking these private lessons with Hicks in it. So you were saying he was teaching technique and and and, and on top of the technique was he rolling with you guys as well? Yeah, yeah. We always Hicks on he. Uh, he basically like line up all the brothers and cousins. He get like ten guys. Okay, let's go with you first. Boom, 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 boom. After the next guy, next guy, next guy, and that was a good practice for him. How old was he at the time? And he's older. The he was already black belt and he was one of the top the best, best guys. Ones. Yeah, one of the be- top five at the time in the country was he Halls. 
Carlos Grace Jr. was really good. And you have few other students from Hall's who were super good, like Mauricio yeah. Gomez, Marcio Stambovics. And, but this Hicks was the top five. Later, he started climbing. I think he was the number one after a while. Yeah, I've, I've heard so many stories. And for you guys that don't know about Hicks and Gracie, go do your... We'll do your history research. <laughs> Outstanding. So Amazing. after after training with him, were you already starting? You were competing from the beginning. Uh, no, I, one of the things um, Hollis culture philosophy like the way you come a champ is put hours in the mat sparring and hours in competition. And basically, what Carlos Grace tried to push me to do is to compete almost every weekend. Every wow. max, like two weeks away, I have some small competition, bigger competition. Because when it comes to the biggest competition, you you used to. you used to the environment of the competition. you used to the adrenaline. And basically, like, um, is okay? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Basically, like, um, I compete often as I can just to get used to the, the, the battle, the to go to the the competition. So yeah. at that time in in Brazil they had competitions like that. They because, have they because have. now it, in America it, it's like that too, you know. Yeah. But but it wasn't. I remember when you know like I first started competing, there wasn't competitions like that much. Yes, it's gotten a lot more popular. But no, I, Brazil Brazil have uh, a lot of competition different. That's why areas, that's why uh, Brazil was so good when yeah. it started coming. The competitions started happening here. They come here and just. Because the kids had been training from a very young age, just like you said, you yeah. know, if kids started from five years old, and that's what we're kind of seeing now with the evolution of the whole world. You know, have their hands on jujitsu almost. Yeah. You know, and there, I'm sure there's a lot of places still that that's not there yet, but um, there's going to be such good athletes coming from everywhere because yeah. of because of the the spread of the knowledge. At that time that you were training with Hickson. Was anybody teaching in America yet? Jiu Jitsu? They, they have. They have. I remember I always talked to Horion. Ho Horion, Horion was yeah. already coming out here before. Yeah. Horion uh, was the the major pioneer in, outside Brazil in the United States. I believe Horion was the, uh, the pioneer. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember some cousins come here and there, but Horz was. How do you have a garage? He, he teach privates at the garage in his house, and, and he do some seminars, he do some little things, try to uh, push the jiu-jitsu outside Brazil right. at the time. I think, I think the, re the, the real thing that kind of pushed jiu-jitsu out there was definitely the UFC. The, the thought of showing, you know, uh, this live to everybody, you know, all the different martial arts involved and then, you know, a jiu-jitsu guy against all the different martial arts. Because I remember in the first one, I don't be I believe Hoist was the only jiu-jitsu guy in the tournament. Uh, the idea was, was uh, first of uh, all, when the, myself arrived in the United States, he and you have like a more like half came if you as half grace he stayed in my house have a group of uh, bigger guys yeah he horse already was here he basically he take us everywhere take us to train if he, the Olympic team in judo some wrestling guys some navy seals some marines and any any place he find some guys who have some idea to do grappling he want us to to test the jiu-jitsu, and you have a chance to to, to go everywhere. But mm, we dominate. We dominate uh, everybody yeah. when they come to the ground. We yeah. submit everybody. And basically, how do you start cultivate the, the idea to, he have some friends, he come out the idea like, I want to do a pay-per-view, and I'm going to, do like something to introduce jujitsu. Yeah, yeah. And basically, like, um, yeah, he was, he was, he was, he was smart. Yeah, he did. Basically, uh, the idea he had how we introduce jujitsu 
Hoyt was closer to him. Yeah. He uh, Hoyt leave for him. He said, "I want to put Hoyt to to go with these guys. He have a good jujitsu, good defense. He have enough to beat all these guys." And that's what he did. He did the first UFC. Hoyt did a good job. Second, Hicks don't have opportunity to fight in Japan. I start fighting sambo, some other sports to introduce jujitsu to it. That's how. The success of UFC, I think, after this was unbelievable. The number of people that wanted start to start calling learning. me to, for seminars, and I have opportunity to travel to a hundred countries. Were you? What age did you receive your black belt? I get my black belt. I was 17 years old, yeah. and you must have been a monster by then. No, <laughs> I, because at the time the reason got so fast because at the time have a rules. I, they changed, but at the time every competition you win like big competition, they not allowed you to come back in the same belt. Oh, wow. I, a basic uh, blue belt, I won the, the championship. Purple belt, I won. The weight, the open really? class. In base, when they come to brown belt, from the blue belt to black belt, I, I got in three years. Yeah. A base, like, um, but the reason because uh, you win competition, you're not allowed to come back in the same belt. And you're beating everybody. <laughs> yeah, one at the time I was training because the, the best group of athletes at the time was my academy. Yeah. In base, uh, Carlos, Grace, and, and Hoss Grace put me to do 40 parties. I train three times a day. I, I have oh, shit. Ten, eight to 10 in the morning. I have in the evening. And late at night, I have. Okay, so, oh, so let's with, break this down. Three times a day you were training every day or or every day. Seven, every seven day days from a week. Monday to Saturday. Jeez. I have one day. One day, one day break. So three times a day. Take me through your first session. Two hours. In those two hours, for example, the first take me through one day of, of the you know. I, I wait I sleep on the mat. I wake up, my cousin Carlos Grace have private lessons and he used me to do the private lessons part of his students. I remember being the same like being from there, <laughs> I go to to the class, who is from owns eleven to to one or something like that, like two hours of class. I go to the whole class, and we go to some drills, like and have the sparring section, and I go to the sparring. In a night, have two sections: have the junior and later the advanced. Mm. In the junior, I go for some more spars. In late at night, is the toughest sparse which all the black belts brown belts come and that's where i think i have the best training mm. the next day same thing they wake up early in the morning wow. go to the process i remember yeah. i this is kind of similar to what i did from white belt to black belt too i i lived on the mat i, I couldn't get enough either i wanted to be there i couldn't wait to 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 wake up i would i remember when i started doing jujitsu I started selling my CDs even earlier in the morning. I would be all over the streets 6 a.m. because I wanted to be early. I wanted to be in the 9 a.m. class and then the 10 a.m. class. Then I'd go sell a little bit more CDs, come back, help with the privates, te help teach the kids class, intermediate class, night class. I did that all the way. I missed those days. Those were the, some of the funnest times in my jujitsu. Now, now it's like so different, you know. Now, like you know, people depend on me to teach, and I miss being the kid going to the class and you know reaching out to my coach and where are you? Why are you late? I miss those days. Those were the the best times. <laughs> then you have the, so much more on your shoulders after that, right? Because I think about it now. Once you get the black belt, like now, like if this is part of your life, like you know, which for me, I. I say I'm going to die and I want to be buried in a gi, you know, it's like, it's my whole life. Um, I got a long way of being in the black belt. I got a long time to go. So it just started from there. You know, I'm just learning. So as you get your black belt, was MMA becoming very popular? Were you interested in doing MMA? Uh, no, I did something over there in Brazil for, but at the time you call Vale Tudo. Vale Tudo, yeah. yeah. But Vale Tudo for us was... Same like Jiu Jitsu. Same, same and Horace Grace, he, he, every Friday, he bring a guy and say, hey, you're gonna fight this guy at the academy. And, but I was not allowed to punch him. He was allowed to punch you. He allowed to do everything. And he's allowed to punch, 
do whatever he wants. The only thing I'm allowed to do is to take him down and submit him. Yeah. And base can have, uh, he bring sometimes bodybuilders, he bring Thai boxer, he bring capoeira guys, bring different guys and stuff. And base like, you're doing that, it's kind of like uh, training. Like you yeah. don't think about uh, the guy, uh, sometimes the guys don't want to use the glove. He, do open hand slaps yeah. for don't cut you. Yeah. And sometimes he put a little box glove and yeah. like, now you can punch. You know what I mean? Of course. Little so, things like you in case you're on the ground let, not let, allowed let me, to Let kick me ask in the you face. this too, since we're on the subject of that. As you were coming up in jujitsu, because I know with me, my coach always told me is like you must also know self-defense jiu-jitsu you must also be able to strike a little bit and you need to be well-rounded for jiu-jitsu to work for you because i remember like some of the tests like and things that we used to do and drills and like we used to train with you know the guys in the mount he has boxing gloves you have to use jiu-jitsu like this was part of the training were you as you were coming up was that involved in your training as well yes i think it's like sometimes this these days is like a little bit overlooked in, in jiu-jitsu that, you know, because I know I'm not here to disrespect anybody, but I love jiu-jitsu. And the only thing I don't want to see ever happen is the, somebody get the false idea because they do jiu-jitsu and they think that's the end all be all. Because if they don't practice actually getting punched and using jiu-jitsu, they're not going to be as good in that situation as they can be. Because I've seen some people that are high level jujitsu guys, and then all of a sudden they're getting hit, and they can they they can make the adjustments to use their jujitsu. So, do you think that that's very important nowadays for these guys that run schools to be also teaching their students, or do you think that kind of maybe pushes some of their customers away? No, I think. Uh, it- like I, I give you an example. Uh, over there in Miami, have um, the Valente brothers. The, the Valente brothers, they follow very strict the tradition, jujitsu, like from Helio Grace, uh, the way they used to teach in downtown, all the privates. Um, the self defense is something designed by, by teach people to get a, a basic defense in case somebody grab from the back or get you a headlock or try attack. It, it, they use that a lot in private lessons yeah. for students. Um, it definitely brothers, the most successful school I see in Miami, thousands of students, and they use this style. This of, method. Uh, this method, which yeah. they prove the success yes. of how important self-defense is. Yeah, I, I try to, I just, you know, lately I've been trying to also, because sometimes I feel like, you know, the guys get ready for a, a jiu-jitsu competition and you, you just start to become, as a teacher, you start to get, like, f- solely focused on competition. And then I remind myself, like, this is not why I'm teaching this jiu-jitsu. This is not why I got into jiu-jitsu. Because I was in a lifestyle when I was younger where, you know, I was in some dangerous places and jiu-jitsu was, like, a, way for me to defend myself so I, I always looked at it like when i'm teaching my students i need to show them like how is this gonna work like if i'm in a real fight situation if i'm in the street also what can i do from there can i punch i can also punch from here i can do this i could do that you know so i like to always try to incorporate i just think sometimes i think a lot of that is lost these days in jiu-jitsu but like like as you say like the the old school of jiu-jitsu this was part of it the self-defense was very important and then so as you as you did valley tudo that at the time what was your goals did you want to become an instructor or did you want to become a fighter what what were you thinking as you were coming up i'm going to explain for you how Hollis grace explained to me when do you, you hear about brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, we never call Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil. We call Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, basically, um, in Brazil, when we say Jiu-Jitsu, the translation for us, you are a grappler. When you 
take your gi, somebody on the street come to attack you, you're a grappler. When you put the gi, you go to a sport jiu-jitsu, you're a grappler. Yes. In case you want to fight a different style, like judo, sambo, some other style, you're still a grappler. Yes. In base, all these other styles, judo, uh, wrestling, sambo, is grappling for us. It yes. basically like uh, what I always try to do is cross over to learning from different styles of grappling to get my myself as a better grappler. In base, uh, self-defense is part of the destruction. It's like when somebody comes to, to the gym, to the academy, um, my focus, 9% of the day, I teach privates in Beverly Hills. In base, like when the students come to the academy, I want to figure out what his needs, what he's looking for, what you want, what he need from my knowledge. In base, some of the students just want to do self-defense. Okay, let's just do self-defense. He don't want to go to competition. He don't want to be you know, an MMA fighter. He just want to know enough in case somebody attacking him on the street. He have hey, some yeah. tools to defend himself. That's what is very important self-defense because you feed these students. Now, 9% of my students today don't want to compete because all them as actors. They want to learn jiu-jitsu <laughs> to do movies. And it's a completely different world for me. That's what I have to relearn how to coach these guys because uh, the first time I have this student who come to my academy in Beverly Hills, he, uh, he come, the insurance come from Universal Studio and told me he can't get a scratch on the face because he's doing a TV show. He get a scratch in the face. He can't do the show. It's a problem. Yeah, because we spend ten million dollars every week that's, for the show. And that what people don't understand. That's no problem for you. Yeah, but it's very. In the beginning was a transition because I come from the world of uh, <laughs> smash, warriors. <laughs> smash so, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> you. It's like the 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 culture I come from is horse grace. I said, oh, before you come a hammer. You start as a nail. Yeah. I'm going to put people to beat you up before you get stronger to learn how to beat people up. That's the old culture as a warriors in growing up in competition in Brazil from Castle Grace and Horse Grace. But when you open school in Beverly Hills and the students can get a scratch on the face, but at the same time they pay you so much money, you start figuring out how can I do a jiu-jitsu, the same grappling, in a way they not get hurt. Yes. And you have to break down everything and create a program in drills and techniques and smart training for them to not get hurt. Yes. And that, like example, when they have a student, I bring a black belt to train them very technical movements and still getting good, but not for competition. Competition, I believe you have to go to war and come success on the war, to step on the war and come a champ. That's the way it is. That's, you have to have a good camp, to have guys to push you to the level to go to a competition. My school today is not the level anymore because 90% of my students is the students who focus to do films. And I have to be sure these guys don't get hurt. Yes. It's not like I don't like the world, the, the way you used to coach before. I just adapt for the new business I'm doing. Yes, 100%. You know what I mean? I, I, I understand that 100% because I'll be honest with you. Like, I my my school like that was like that. And I remember when I was getting closer to becoming full-time teaching, my, my coach told me, he's like, Legacy, you need to stop, like, he's like, you need to stop making everybody tap all the time, like, you could, people will go away and then i i really started to to look at it and what you said makes a lot of sense to me because you know jujitsu shouldn't only be for those guys that want to compete jujitsu should, should be able to be for, for that lady that she's in her she's older but she does she wants she wants she needs something to do with her time she wants to learn some martial arts she doesn't want to be punched in her face there's there's so many different people that i've come across that that, that benefit from jujitsu 
And if they were forced to be in those type of environments where it's sink or swim, they don't want to, they're not going to be there. So I think it's very important what you're saying is not just like in Beverly Hills. I think it's all over the world. You're, it's so important that us as instructors are able to see, um, hey, this is, you know, this is not somebody that should be training with him because, you know, he's getting ready for a competition and this one over here is a lawyer and has to go to his job tomorrow and he doesn't want to have his arm hyperextended. So it's like, I think, you know, what you're saying is, is very true and a lot of people should take heed to that uh, and to pay attention. That, that comes with paying attention to who your students are. You know, and I think one thing I've learned a lot, you know, is is focusing because, you know, I also have women in my class with as, as, at the same time as the, as the men. And then it's like, I have to make sure I'm, I'm watching because they sometimes the, the the ladies end up with, you know, one of the guys that's n never trained with a woman before and he's just starting jujitsu. And then I'm like, no, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> that's a, this is not what, here, have him come with me. You know, so it's like, I think what, what you're saying is it, it makes sense. How did you end up in Beverly Hills? Like, I mean, you were in Brazil, you were doing Vale Tudo, you were, you, you were a black belt. Like, what makes you come out this way? No, it's not. It's like you go with the flow. Life takes you places. Did, some, did one of the, the coaches come here first that you came with, or you decided to come to, to, to California on your own? No, uh, at the time, I have a cousin named Cesar Gracie. He, Cesar Gracie stayed in my house in Brazil. Nick and Nate Diaz's coach? Yeah. Shout out to uh, shout out to all of them. Yeah, Caesar was my, yeah. He stayed in my house. Uh, he arrived over there as a white belt. Or he get all the way to brown belt training for me. Caesar, so Caesar was your student. Was my student. Caesar Gracie was your student. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's crazy. He's an amazing guy. I have watching his accomplice, the coach is fantastic. But when the well, two of his favorite fighters are yeah. probably like. The whole world's favorite fighters. Yeah, Nick, yeah. I know Nick and Nate Diaz are like I'm a. Those are my guys. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, those are my favorite fighters. You know. So, I mean, just you know. And then he had so many other good guys too. He's he, and he fought himself. Like what a G he was. So that and and that was your student. Yeah, he lived in my house. He one day things he keep it. You have to come to us. You have to come to us. You have to come to us. And at that time, I have a girlfriend who want to come to school here in America. Yeah, I said, it's going to be good. I want to take a break. I go over there for six months. I stay in his house. He, uh, what happened? Uh, I didn't like San Francisco much at the time. I didn't like the weather. And Hori, I have opportunity to talk to Hori. I was very close to Royce. We grew up together in Brazil and Royce and Hori Lehenzo. And I start talking to Royce. Royce, boy, come here. Royce said, come here to, you know what I mean? We have a space for you here. We, we can help us to teach here in the garage. And I said, okay, let's come to LA. I like LA. I start like LA better than San Francisco for me. And I start see Royce. I start doing wrestling. I love wrestling. I start competing in Sambo at the time. I didn't know want to stop competing and, and basic like um uh, that's how basic i start come closer to the beginning of the journey because holding for me was the major pioneer yeah he's the one he have the vision and he's the to, oldest of the the, the, the yeah, family he's the older brother of uh the kids of helio gracie yes and Horium was a lawyer, he's super smart, he had this vision to prove to the world the sport of jiu-jitsu to fighting. Yeah, he did it. And, and he, <laughs> when he did the UFC, at the true Horium didn't have intention, oh, I'm gonna do a business, I'm gonna make billions of dollars. He didn't, he wanted to introduce jiu-jitsu. And Horium accomplished that success by doing the UFC. After this, the ball changed. Yeah. When the Royce have a chance to win the first, the second UFC, 
Royce become one of the most famous uh, fighter in the whole group. Yeah. Uh, I remember him out of your Royce, people couldn't believe it. <laughs> Autograph, I said, Poor Royce. <laughs> <laughs> I've been fighting in Brazil for 10 years. You'll be here, you fight one event, you 10 times more famous than everybody. But that was good for everybody. Yes. Because that ended up meeting Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris offers to open school. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. Shout out to Chuck Norris. Yeah, Chuck Norris. Yeah. Chuck Norris is like a older brother for us. And Chuck Norris is very sweet. He have this mall and he said, why you guys don't start a school over here? This is in the valley when you see them. And that's how it started. His son, like I said, Chuck Norris, I can't do that by myself. It's okay to bring some of my brothers to help. He said, yeah, bring your brothers. I brought little by little, Carlos, John, Jean-Jacques, John. He put, that's how we end up starting the Machado group. And, and, Chuck, and Chuck was training with you guys, right? Yeah, he's a black belt. Yeah, he's and he's, uh, he's good, right? Uh, like, <laughs> he's, he, he's like, I remember hearing stories of him being like training at your guys, with you guys. Did you guys... Did you guys put him through the ringer? Did you guys really? Chuck Norris for me. <laughs> people don't know much. What Chuck Norris, man, he have that. But yeah. People don't <laughs> understand how tough the guy is. Hell Chuck yeah. Norris is real deal. Oh, yeah. I one time I went to Chuck Norris. He trained for, was Benny Orchidis over there, is, is Howard Jackson, another champion kickball. Man, he trained for hours. He the bag, pop, pop. I said, man, this guy, He's the, the real deal. deal. Yeah, see, there we go. We He's wanted like, that clarification. I have even, I remember, <laughs> Van Damme used to work for him. Wow. On pads and stuff. Before Van Damme come success as an actor, but he ended up spending a lot of time uh, over there in Chuck Norris' house. And little by little, Van Damme started get chance to do some films. And suddenly like he took off his career. Yeah. But I remember meeting Van Damme in early ages like that. Did you train with Van Damme too? No, I met Van Damme. Did you uh, later when you met him? Did you want to like come train with me? Let me show you something, bro. <laughs> no, Van Damme. Van Damme <laughs> we, be like, we actually very good friends. Van Damme and Steve Segal. I love these guys. They come real good friends of both. But what uh, is interesting, Van Damme. I met him at the time. He was the biggest star in the world at the time. Uh, he and Steve Segal was huge. And to have a chance to meet these guys in the top of the career, they treat us with so much respect, so much love, and end up ask us to help to do some fight scenes, some stuff like that. That's when it, uh, I start little by little get interest because Chuck Norris asked he can help him to do some fight scenes here in Texas Ranger. Uh, Steve Segal called, oh, I was doing uh, Under Sea 2, you help me to do some fight scenes. And, and little by little, I said, okay, let me, that's why I ended up in Beverly Hills because I said, let's see what's this business about. I don't know much about Yeah. When I ended up in Beverly Hills, I started teaching more actors and little bit some directors, some producers. And I started like, let me try to do this, what you guys think, as an advisor. And little by little, some guys, why you don't be a fight choreographer? I said, poor. Fight choreographer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and little by little, you say, okay, I don't even know what's fight choreographer. It sounds like, okay. Sounds good to me. Like, no problem. Yeah, but <laughs> little by little, people, I like these techniques. I like these. And little by little, you start to understand what it is. And now I end up becoming a stunt coordinator, fight choreographer, I end up uh, help to co direct some of the films. Now, I'm tell me some films. I work in John Wick. That's what, that's what I was waiting for you to say. Yeah. So you, Keanu Reeves was actually your student as well? We trained Keanu with the, uh, the studio 8711 um, for a little bit. He uh, did some, I, I forget, he did arm lock, triangle, I don't remember. Yeah, no, he trained, but Keanu have a team. Yeah. yeah I mean, one of the guys in a One team of the guys of that help him. Ten guys. Yeah. And I was more like an advisor in some ideas in the grappling aspect. But uh, I went over there, I started add more grappling, little by little more grappling. You can and start the to director see. liked what I was doing, and he gave me more chance to help. And that's how I ended up working, helping. Some the black belts of my brothers moved over there just to train Keanu full-time jiu-jitsu. And judo, too. Um, Chad, the director, was my student. I gave him a black belt, too. Wow. He, he's a phenomenal martial artist. He's been doing stunts. 
in training for Daniel Osano, Eric Pauls for centuries. He was the one. Say who, that name again. Uh, Eric. Dan, Daniel Nosano. Yeah, uh, and uh, Eric Paulson. Eric Paulson. Yeah. Eric Paulson is also your student. Yeah, I met Eric Paulson. He was a bartender. Shout out to uh, Eric Paulson. Eric friend, Paulson, friend is, of the show, is one of the best friends I have. You I love the guy. You too. met you met him when he was a bartender. I remember Hoyce brought me to a, a club in Manhattan Beach at the time, and he had this guy long hair, blonde, skinny, who was the bartender. And he is kind of doing some martial arts. And little by little, we start talking. He start coming to the garage to train for us. Oh, wow. And that's how he start. And he trained for Hicks a little bit. Later, he ended up connecting and start training for me all the way to black belt. Yeah. yeah. And he, he talked but he was a, already a phenomenal kickboxer. He won the world champion some events in Japan. He was, fought some MMAs. Eric Pauls was the real, one of the most, Eric Pauls is a type of guy, was one of my favorite students to teach, I tell why. Because Eric Pauls is a type of guy I teach him one time, he learned the techniques. I didn't have to explain him twice. And he, this ability when you find a martial art is fantastic. And Eric Pauls come this phenomenal technician in many styles. Yes. He training. Uh, uh, leg locks in Japan. Mm-hmm. And he come back, start doing all these crazy foot locks before anybody tried before, to do yeah. Yeah. heel hooks and things like that from Sambu, from all these punk crazy and all this stuff. Catch wrestling. Yes. And he stuff. was basically the first guy who actually start showing me. Uh, he can look this, heel hook, look this. And I said, oh, that's, that's crazy, but this is not allowed to do in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> yeah. Was I said you can't do that in the competition, competition. jiu jitsu. Why was it? What do you think it was? Is this because it would just destroy the guy's like you know leg? Is that why it was so looked down on? No, it's it's the game, it's the rules. Like at growing up over there in Brazil, uh, I think he, because heel hooks sometimes hurt the guys. For sure, for sure. It's going to tear your knee apart. That's yeah, like the worst. Yeah. So they just did that to avoid it. So it was always kind of look. To protect the, the athletes. athletes at the time. And it's so big now. See, that was a big <laughs> a big problem in the future for the athletes in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because in Abu Dhabi, when they, uh, Prince Tarnan started Abu Dhabi competition, uh, the game changed because Prince Tarnan wanted to mix grapplers from all over the world to fight a different rules. Yeah. And to give a chance for Sambo guys, these guys to do leg lock can be good for them. He said, okay, now let's, sorry. Oh, you good? Uh, let's, let's open, let people do whatever they want. Yeah, and that's what changed the game. But the guy who really changed the game, I think, was uh, Hanzo. Have one student. Hanzo mentioned about this guy because he wrote a book for Hanzo about jiu-jitsu and stuff. The guy was super smart. The uh, Donaher, yeah, John Donaher. He, he the Death wrote, Squad, or yeah, no, they're he, not the he, Death Squad anymore. They're. I uh, think he started this group training. These guys in Hell's Academy, he, uh, basically he realized that because a guy to, to come out of this strategy had to be almost like a genius in some way. And he saw that weakness. He saw that, wait a minute, I trained my students to attack this weakness can be a problem for a lot of these champions because they, they don't have a defense for that. And that's what he did. Some of his students coming and won a against lot. some of the top guys at the time. And that opened the, wait a minute, like a lot of the new generation start to realize what's that? You yeah. know what I mean? That yeah. it sounds like come this fever of the new generation, we have to learn this. 100%. Because that's... They can't get overlooked. That's is, uh, part of the new game of jiu-jitsu, that's good. I like a lot because change the direction in jiu-jitsu, in competition, principally no gi in many different ways. 
Yeah, one hundred percent. I just I, I I love it. I think it definitely changed the game. I just still haven't seen it in MMA yet. I think in MMA. I think that's that's what I always I always think about it. Like I know the guys all train jujitsu as well, right? Everybody that does MMA has to know jujitsu. Yeah. So the guys, for those of you that watch MMA and don't understand that, you realize why you might not see as much jujitsu anymore is because both guys are training jujitsu. Now, if you take, you know, someone that's brand new and never trained jujitsu. And you put them against someone who has, you're going to see something something completely different, in my opinion. Uh, Carson Grace said something for me. I always remember that. He said, you are black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You go to a fight, the guy punch you in the face, you drop for a brown belt. <laughs> yeah. He kick you in the ribs, you drop to a purple belt. 100%. I've, he I've throw you, your head on the ground, you end up a white belt. Yep. And the guy's going to end up even submit you. The bottom line, when you put punch on you, somebody can come and punch your face, the game is changed. Yes. It's not jujitsu anymore. It's a uh, right. Right. punch involved. Right. Right. That's that's the only thing I always try to, you know, remind, you know, my, my students is that like, yes, these these moves are cool. Like, but also remember that if you're in a self defense situation, some of these positions that you put yourself into are okay in jujitsu. But they're not going to be okay for you to be in those positions if the guy can punch you. That's the only thing I, I try to, you know, articulate to some of my students because they they sometimes they I want them to understand that there's a difference between these some of these fancy moves you see in jujitsu and competition, and if I'm in the, the street and and I have to defend myself, or if I see a lady getting attacked and I need to go defend her against somebody. Or there's someone on drugs around me in the area and he's doing something to somebody and I need to help stop him. I need to be ready for, for that situation as well, in my opinion. So what it, for me is like if I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu and something bad is happening in, in around me and I can't use my jiu-jitsu to help somebody, then then something's wrong. Something I didn't pick up the right things that I should have also picked up along the way when I was doing jiu-jitsu. Just, just my opinion. You know, I think all schools should focus a little bit more on helping and making sure their students are also not only prepared for competition jujitsu, but also for real life jujitsu situations. And I'm sure you agree a little bit, but of course, so these these students that you have in Hollywood, like, um, tell me so, some 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 more names. I've seen pictures of you with Mel Gibson and like all kind. Of, what's like one of your like you would say your one of the most famous actors you've trained with that trained with you consistently? Um, number one student I have is Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher he, uh, is my number one student. Uh, dude, the dude wears my car, right? And yeah. like, <laughs> he's, uh, that guy's been in a lot of movies. He's, he's awesome. Yeah. He started from you with White Bell, right? Yeah. Ashton Kutcher been training for me now for almost 10 years. And and when he's a brown belt now, or he's a brown belt, but Ashin Kutch is very interesting because the look I have with him, people don't know, but he was a high level wrestler. He all his brothers used to do wrestling in college, and he even come points to have a scholarship. Oh, so he was a good wrestler. Yeah, very good wrestler. But he stopped wrestling, and that be luck to be a model actor. And his career took off. And when he, I start training him, he's like 6'3", uh, 200 pounds, like super flexible. And he had this wrestling ability. It was easy to throw some jiu-jitsu techniques. And he adapted very well. Just when I, I create like a teaching him how to fight from the bottom. And uh, with his back on the ground, that's the adaptation I have to go through. Well, he learned fast. He's, he's like unbelievable. One of my f amazing students, but um, he is very phenomenal wrestler. Yeah, With yeah, the right. jiu-jitsu was easy. For you have good wrestling, the jiu-jitsu, all you need. You're a grappler. Yeah, you already, you already know, know the like, balance, <laughs> the takedown. That's a big part of it, for sure. For sure, 100%. <laughs> that's, that's awesome that you've been able to, you know, take 
jujitsu and then also put it on film and well you know being a part of john wick and and you know training some you know amazing actors i think it's i think it's awesome it's it's a blessing it's it's a it's it's the route that it, that it took you on and um now you're a coral belt you're I'm a not not coral i'm the red in the white red now. white yeah coral is one before the seven stripes what do they call the example what do they call the red belt? white belt i don't The candy candy or something. <laughs> candy, candy cane. I know what happens like this. Hey, but I know that you, belt. Growing up, crazy. the highest belt was a black belt and red belt. I didn't have these belts, quarter belts, all this before. These coming Later now. On. Yeah. 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 But uh, exam for me, it was the first black belt from Baja Gracie, from Carlos Gracie Jr., one of his first black belts. And basically, I, I was super early, you know what I mean, yeah. to get my belt. And for me, belt is nice, everything, but uh, the true, I, I try to be a, a student. I still want to learn more jiu-jitsu from the new generation. Like, example, the, I always look up to the who is next top champion, who's, what he's doing, who's the next top coaches. Who's your favorite right now? Competitor, I like this kid. I saw his fighting uh, for the first time uh, another day. Uh, I have some friends who brought him to the event. I watched his fighting. He's remind me, he uh, no, he remind Hall's Grace a little bit, his style. Was the kid uh, Mika Galvão? Galvão, oh, well, yeah. yeah. He, for me, how calm he is, how class can he fight how fast he sung his movements uh, i was very impressed i like him but i have so many sometimes i have to ask my students to update me yes yeah. <laughs> i think uh, i think like say who is I, the, I, the I, new I, champion i think the, the number the one list the thing. number one guy like right now everybody like in, especially like maybe not in the gi world but like the number one guy for that gets the most recognition i think is gordon ryan right Gordon Ryan for me remind me a lot of McGregor. Uh, <laughs> the reason I love McGregor because McGregor he's a type of guy who talk a lot of stuff. Yeah, but he delivers. He delivers. And, yeah, uh, it's the same. He come, he say things, and he go, he do it. He's very good. And for me, I got the respect as an athlete because the last Abu Dhabi I was watching, he fought his weight class, he beat everybody, submit everybody, and he still have the super fight. Yes. And yeah. he went to Galvão, he ended up submitting Galvão. Yeah. If for me, that was brother, big. it's an action. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that, right? He come and he <laughs> deliver. Yeah, that was You that have was to respect you can't what the athlete it, yeah. did. Yeah. Like, same like Roger Grace, same like Hickson Grace, Roger. same like when they used to fight Man, I don't want to say. I want to show. Yes. When you show, it's amazing. But at the same time, he's very entertaining. He's a a, a character. He, yeah. I like that a lot, actually, I, because it get fun to watch. I like to watch him, Hodger too. Hodger was Hodger Gracie was uh, amazing. Hodger is fantastic. He Hodger, was, he was Hodger is a mix. He's <laughs> a unique game. Hodger remind a guy. Uh, have this fighter from Horse Grace who was phenomenal, uh, Mauricio Stambovsk. Uh, we nickname him uh, Macarrão. Macarrão in English is pasta because he's very flexible. flexible. <laughs> you Horge remind me him a little bit. He's like the long guy who come on top of you look like an octopus. You know what I mean? That's the kind yeah. of animal I see Horse, like uh, Horge. He come look this octopus yeah, when you see the guy more arms in a bar <laughs> triangle choke like this animal <laughs> start coming to swallow you. Uh, I remember watching and Hodge Grace was, Hodge was I remember watching him very unique game. The, very unique. the first time I saw him live, I think I was a white belt and he was it was worlds and he was submitting every black belt from the mount in the, in the cross choke. Because he blanket the guy. He's like this. <laughs> it's his body macaroni. Type, yeah. It's, it, and it was like, these really good guys are just getting choked in this, like, you know, this move that you learn. 
like your first day as a white belt, you know? It's like, how is he doing that? But yeah, he's he was phenomenal to watch. And then I remember the last match he had, because uh, I actually like when uh, Marcelo, you remember Marcelo? He he had the GF team guys come out here, so we had seen Bouchesha uh, and uh, all those like Adolfo Vieira. A lot of guys had come th through the area. And I remember seeing his last match that he did in the jiu-jitsu with Bushesha. And that was, did you remember, did you see that match where he took, yes. he, yeah, that, I mean, the guy's just a legend. And then to see his whole family, like, run on the mat and lift him up and, and, and like, you know, it's just, like, pretty crazy. Like, the events are pretty, pretty cool, like, when you have all the Brazilians behind you and they're singing the song and they're chanting your name. And no, <laughs> I, think, I, I think the fight was amazing. I tell why, because I remember Meta Morris, uh, Halleck Grace, and some of the Hollywood kids put the Meta Morris, which was one of my favorite competitions. I thought watch. it was really good too. Amazing. They were, I think Halleck at the time did a phenomenal job. I think he did I, too. I love Meta Morris there. The way they put together, have all the celebrities, was amazing. But I remember, I think it was one of his, Roger fought him. He, on the end of the fight, Bushesha did a sweep, he got the armbar, he escaped. Yeah, I remember but, uh, that fight. Because the, the rules is no victory, end up a draw. But a lot of people say, hey, this Bushesha, a little bit longer, maybe he, he would have been Roger. On the back, Roger might always, for me, Roger have, man, yeah, I, I didn't forget about this I fight. Didn't, yeah, yeah. And I think in Brazil, uh, uh, Roger's female cousin, Kira, she put an event and she said, why not to give a chance for Roger to, to redeem himself? Yeah. And and take what? a chance to fight Bushesh again and um, have this fight who, Probably his back in his mind, I want to get this guy to. And Bushesh at the time was the number one fighter in sports jiu jitsu. He proved to win 10 world championships. Yeah. And he was bigger than Hodge, size wise. And to see Hodge come and able to surprise, submit him. Yeah. He. Retire his career with gold stars. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. He Fe lots of feathers in the There's not cap. else to say. <laughs> yeah, it's that, like, that, done deal. I did everything in the sport. He's and man. I ca he came one of the most well named sport jujitsu competitor in the history. And I have a lot of respect. I, I, I have opportunity to grow up, no Roger. His mother is one of my best friends. And I know his father super well. To have a chance to see his career from white belt to his success is fantastic. A hey. lot of love and respect for Haji Gray. Shout out to Haji Gray. What up, everybody? Want to take a quick second out of the podcast just to give a shout out to our sponsor, the best criminal defense attorney I know. The last time I got in trouble, I needed somebody that was going to look into my case and actually fight for me and give me the best deal possible. And he did that. And I'll make sure that he does that for you. Make sure you shout me out if you guys reach out to him. They're the sponsor of the convo. You know anybody, a family member, or yourself that make a mistake, you want somebody like him on your side. Arash, please let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Thank you. Arash Hashemi, 310-448-1529, or HashemiLaw.com, H-A-S-H-E-M-I-L-A-W.com, or just Google hashtag better call hash. Remember that, better call hash. You'll find me on every social media channel. All over the internet. 310-448-1529. You better call Hash. And he had a great MMA career. He he did it all. And one of the things <coughs> excuse me. And one of the things that I like about Hodger Gracie is when you hear him talk about jujitsu and you hear the mind that he has for jujitsu and how he speaks and promotes jujitsu in such a good way and positive way. We need more people like that. So yeah, he's a for sure, he's a great, great ambassador. Great, great. success academies in One, England. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So as we get closer to getting you know, done with the podcast, tell me, Higgin, who is your number one favorite jiu-jitsu fighter of all time? 
You got. You uh, can pick one. I have two. In case two, you two. give okay. me two, uh, I, I, he he cut me there too. The all times, my number one is Hickson. Hickson for sure. I thought for I sure. thought you were gonna say that. Shout yeah. out to Hickson Gracie. Yeah, the second one is uh, Horse Gracie. Horse Gracie because the new generation didn't have opportunity to follow this guy's career, and they changed the game for me in the evolution of Jiu Jitsu. Without these two guys, Jiu Jitsu, I don't know where Jiu Jitsu is going to be. Because you have to realize Horse Gracie, Hicks and Grace, the generation who come after them come to them. You know what I mean? It, the 9% of the top academies in the world, the roots come from Horse Grace. It, 100%. I think Horse Gracie uh, is one the the guys need a lot of credit for his uh, vision to the future of the sports jiu-jitsu to the level it is today. I give all the credit for Hoss Grace and Hicks and Grace. Okay. Now, next question. Who is your favorite jiu-jitsu mixed martial arts fighter of all time? Uh, then it could be someone that you see t today or someone... No, my favorite guy is no question about Damien Maya. Maya. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. There are two reasons. Because yeah. not only he's a phenomenal grappler, he's a phenomenal MMA fighter, but he's one of the most humble guys i met in years. Yes, 100%. He, I never met a guy so humble, so nice, so smart. He, I, I love the guy. I think I have so much love and respect because... He is a good example as a jiu-jitsu guy is supposed a, to be because fighter. he he is the accomplishment he have in the MMA world to his jiu-jitsu is fantastic. It's yeah. fantastic what he able to go on the cage as a jiu-jitsu guy if he, he able to submit the number of fights he have and to put jiu-jitsu to grow in MMA more and more to give example for the new generation. I think that Maya did so much a great job. I have so much love and respect for him. Hundred percent. Shout out to Demi and Maya. Now before we before we do go, I do want to ask you this, Higgin. Um I think jujitsu is good for fighting, for competition, for self defense, all that stuff. But for you, what do you think is the most important thing? about jiu-jitsu and what jiu-jitsu can do for someone for someone's life how can it help people what have you seen what is your vision for jiu-jitsu as far as for human beings like what what can someone that hasn't done jiu-jitsu benefit for someone that might be living in a bad area what do you think the benefits of brazilian jiu-jitsu uh, jiu-jitsu period the way i see is simple uh, the way i see is the environment Example, you put a person in a bad environment, right? The person is like a sponge. He gets contaminated for the bad environment and end up maybe even be a bad guy. I think the chance for him to survive the bad environment is to, to get out from the bad environment. What's good about you get this guy who is in a bad environment, you put them in a good environment, he absorbs the positive, the train, the friendship, the brotherhood, the grappling, the respect, the, the things like that, they can help to save this guy because the environment is a positive environment. It's a health environment. It basically start translate outside the mat to his lifestyle. Oh, I need to be health. I need to, because tomorrow I want to training. I want this. I want to now start competition. I need to get in shape. All these little things, the environment of the Jiu-Jitsu Academy help this negative to, to be an environment of positivity. And basically, the key to have this success environment come from the coaches. When the coach come and create this environment, whatever is inside the environment is going to end up absorb this positivity. And that's what Jiu-Jitsu become very popular because... The jiu-jitsu, I believe the reason jiu-jitsu grow is the fastest growing martial arts because you connect to the guy, you spar with the guy, you train with the guy, you get to know the guy. 
You know what I mean? I think the difference sometimes you, you go to some gyms who is still a good environment, but you just do points on the air, kick the bag and do little things like that, but not have the chance to real spar with the guys. Don't have to create this bound of a friendship. You know what I mean? I think that's why I think jiu-jitsu for that reason grows so much. Because when you part in this environment, it's like extension from outside your family. You have the home, your family. Now you step in another family. You come a part of the group. You're addicted. You say, "Oh, I want to." Now I have a new family. You know what I mean? That's why jujitsu is good for anyone. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And that's why it was exactly why it was good for me. <laughs> thank God. Thank God that it, it was there. And you know. Just goes to show you, you know, from from a, another legend, like he goes to tell you, like the same things that I've been saying, you know, is, you know, jujitsu. You might not want to be a fighter, and and that's okay. Like, there's so many more benefits from being a martial artist, from being Brazilian jujitsu, than just being a fighter. And above all, you know, being able to take care of yourself, Mr. Machado. It's been a real honor. Thank you for coming and setting. We had some. We talked about some real history today, some thank fun you, stories. Um, what is Mr. Machado up to nowadays? I know you are doing seminars. So if people want to follow you, like what is your social media? Uh, how can they get a hold of you if they want to do a seminar? I, because I believe you're doing seminars and you teach private classes and stuff like that as well. So yeah, seminar is my passion. I love to teach seminar because that's my mini vacation, as I say. I felt like when they teach jiu-jitsu, it's not work, it's vacation. Because I have a chance to travel everywhere. And I get new friends. I have a chance to go to a different environment, meet like great people. I love it. And same and I, I want to do it for the rest of my life. And I want to travel more other countries. Any opportunity I have to go to a nice environment and have fun teaching is my, my pleasure, my honor. But what I'm doing right now, who I'm very passionate about, I'm going to direct my first movie. I, direct, I start directing action films. And I have a few movies on board who I'm going to start putting together to direct. That's going to be another challenge in my life. And you to have... To try to get jiu-jitsu on the big screen And morning. you have an actor and someone, a friend right here. A rapper, so, a rapper. And, a, and, a, and I, I can look like you a can bad do guy. The, I can do a lot of cool you stuff. You can do all the music <laughs> in the movie, all the soundtrack. And I can play, and I can act. I can do it all. So you got, you got a friend in me, and please put me in any projects you would like to put me on. I would love I to. I would love to. So, uh, and then also, you, so as you're working on this movie, uh, is is there a way people can get a hold of you for seminars? Yeah. Um, my seminar, uh, I, ha I have a uh, partner. He's named Patrick. I can give you his number. And um, any information, any details, just call my my right hand guy. We'll, we'll put all the guys. We'll put yeah. all the links to. Uh, and Patrick Mr. is the one who organized my life right we'll, now. We'll put all the links for Patrick in the description in the bio. So if you guys ever want to do a seminar or have Mr. Machado, you know, like do something for you at your school and you'd like to fly him out or get him out there. You guys would not be missing out because I can tell you firsthand as myself, I, I have been in one of your classes, amazing guy, amazing teacher, amazing person, a legend of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Thank you for Thank you, being sir. here on my platform and, and giving us some of your time, brother. God bless you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Hagen Machado guys like subscribe, tell your mama and your daddy. Peace.